Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Mark of the Rodent. And today, we are doing the ultimate Lamborghini models tier list. Now, before we get into this, two things. One, how a tier list works. Well, it S is like the best... A is the next best, it's like a school grading system, right? So A is the next best, B is like above average, C is slightly below average, D is pretty below average, and then F is like the worst. Uh, also, the other thing, these are not every single Lamborghini models. These are the only ones that like I personally care about and I'm sure that you guys are care about. Uh, and another thing is we are not including every like performance version of that car so because there's just so many so like for example the Yurikon has a Yurikon Performante it has a Yurikon Evo it has a Yurikon STO we're just going to bunch the Yurikon into one car same with the Aventador we're not going to do the Aventador SV we're not going to do the Aventador SVJ we're just going to bunch the Aventador's trim levels into one car just to make it easier I don't want to have like 20 different cars on the list and have four of them be one, a Yurikon with like different bumpers so anyway without further ado let's get right into it with the Lamborghini Cyan or Cyan this is a car that I'm honestly going to be 100% honest with you I don't know a lot about so I'm pretty much just going off of the looks alone and it looks okay it, it looks like one of the very futuristic models that Lambo makes I'm gonna put it in the B tier it, it, it looks pretty good I don't like the rear end that much but the front end is very aggressive the rear end looks kind of weird but besides that it is a very good looking car once again I don't know much about the performance level of this car so I can't really say much on that but in terms of looks I give it a B tier it, it, it's probably very fast obviously it's a Lamborghini but yeah B tier next is the Diablo uh, I personally think the Diablo is easily an S tier Lamborghini all day. I think it is probably, besides one other one, the best looking Lambo of all time. Uh, everything about the Diablo is super cool. They had the Diablo GTR, the Diablo SV. It was the first Lamborghini to ever reach 200 miles per hour. Little fun fact for you the Diablo SV, which is obviously the performance version of the base model Diablo, is actually more, uh, is actually cheaper, my bad, than buying a base model Diablo when it came out because it, it, cost less for them to make it due to all the weight reduction which is pretty cool actually so you could buy a faster one back then for cheaper which was awesome awesome obviously next is going to be the lamborghini lm002 that's the uh, truck lamborghini you guys know exactly what it is everybody knows what it is i'm going to put it in the f tier i know i'm going to make a lot of people mad with that and hear me out if I were to buy a pickup truck, a something that's like can go anywhere, I'm not going to spend six figures on a Lamborghini to do it. I also don't think the looks are that good. I think I'd rather have a Hummer. I think I'd rather have a Jeep. I think it looks pretty bad. Sure, does it have the Lamborghini engineering behind it? Yes, but some can argue that that's even worse because now it's going to be very unreliable. And the whole purpose of buying one of these giant trucks is that they can do whatever you want them to do reliably. Um... I just don't understand the hype behind it. That's all. I get that it's got a Lamborghini badge on it, but when you compare it to other trucks of its class, it is just it's just lackluster to me. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna put it in the F tier. Hopefully, you guys understand. Uh, next is going to be the Yurikon. I'm gonna put the Yurikon in a B tier, right next to the Cyan there. It is it is probably the best entry level supercar in the world right now, in my opinion. You can buy these for under 100k at auction, and I know that sounds blasphemous, and it doesn't sound like I'm telling you the truth. I am. How do you think TJ Hunt bought that Lamborghini and cut into it? Do you think he spent 200 grand on a Lamborghini and started cutting into it? No, he spent less than 100K, cut into it, and then made a bunch of money because he put a wide body kit on it. These Lambos, if you buy them at auction with a rebuilt title and you rebuild them, are very, very good investments right now. They're freaking awesome. There's also, there, one thing I will say about the Yurikon that does kind of suck is they're just very uh, saturated. There's a lot of Yurikons out there. It's like, kind of, a lot of people actually get upset because there's like over 20,000 of these built already and that kind of defeats the ex exclusivity I don't know how to say that word exclusivity of it <laughs> you know what I mean so people it's not like super rare compared to a lot of other supercars so that's what people don't like about it next though is going to be the Lamborghini Urus or Urus it's the Lamborghini SUV I'm gonna put it in the C tier it's cool for an SUV, but I'm not an SUV fan. Uh, on top of that, it kind of has the same issue with the LM002. It's like, if you're going to buy an SUV, why would you spend six figures on one when you can buy one that does the exact same thing for much, much less? I, that's the whole, like, I'd much rather own a BMW X6. They're so much beautiful. They're so much better looking, in my opinion. They have that Aston Martin DBS, like, SUV. I'd rather buy that. I think it looks so much better. Lamborghini, yes, it has a Lamborghini badge on it, and you get the whole, oh, I drive a Lambo. 
But is it a true Lambo? In my personal opinion, the answer is N-O, buddy. I don't think it really is a true Lambo. It's pretty cool, but it's nothing super cool. Next is going to be the Aventador. Um, easy A tier. The Aventador is probably... Next, however, is going to be, in my opinion, Lamborghini's only hypercar. Uh, the Lamborghini Veneno or Veneno, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put it right, right at A tier again next to the Aventador. It is awesome. I know some people say that they don't like the looks. They think that the Lamborghini Veneno is way too aggressive looking. I disagree with that at 100%. I think it looks awesome. I think, yeah, it is aggressive, but that's kind of like what makes it so special. Like you have cars nowadays like the Koenigsegg Gesco, the Bugatti Bolide, uh, the McLaren p1 and the mclaren senna they're aggressive they're aggressive track focused cars for a reason they that stuff matters and it actually makes a difference and i guarantee on the veneno these vents and sharp edges are there to give it better aerodynamics i think the car is amazing it's my little sister's favorite car of all time too by the way random fact there but it's just so you know it is a beautiful car are they ridiculously expensive yeah will they ever come down to price no because they're freaking veneno there's only like 50 of them but they're super sick. I easily think it gets the A tier. I don't think it gets the S tier because of the price alone and the fact that it's just that you're never going to be able to actually own one. So it kind of defeats the purpose of it. However, we are on to the Countach. And this is going to make a lot of people angry. A lot of people angry. But I'm going to put it in the D tier. It, listen, I'm a 2000s kid. Okay, I was born in 2000. Uh, so to me, this car doesn't hold a lot of this nostalgic value to it. And so when you look at it from a perspective of somebody that doesn't really care about the nostalgia of it, it's just a boring looking car to me. It It, it is cool. It has, I love the wing. I, I will say I like the wing. It is probably one of the coolest supercars of its time for sure. It was one of the first supercars ever, to be honest. And I love that about it. Um, it is super cool in that regard, but like actually compared to these other lamborghinis in my opinion it's just nothing really on top of that obviously we all know that it's like actually hell to try and drive one of these things uh it is apparently horrible you have to take your shoes off because the clutch is so close to the brake pedal everything on the interior is incredibly jam-packed if you're taller than six foot your head's going to hit the roof uh the, you don't have a window the heat and ac barely works it is actually like a living nightmare to drive the car um, the windshield wiper doesn't work. There's a couple other things out there. The headlights are horrible. It is a bad car to actually drive, but I do understand the importance behind it, and I give it respect for that, but I think there's one more Lamborghini that's 10 times more important than in any way, and that is going to be the next car that we're talking about, the Lamborghini Mayur Miura, Miura, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put that one in a C tier. <laughs> Once again, just like I said before, I'm a 2000s kid. This car doesn't hold a lot of nostalgic value to me, but... I will say I like the looks of this one a lot better than I like the looks of the Countach. It is just timeless. I mean, how could you not like the looks of the Miura? It's just like one of the, in my opinion, the most beautiful cars of the 60s ever. Uh, these cars are ridiculously expensive nowadays, obviously, and they're honestly not worth your price uh, or worth your money unless you're looking at it as an investment standpoint. But obviously, if you have sentimental value to it and it's like nostalgic to you, then yeah, it makes sense if you want to buy one of these. But to me, the nostalgic cars of my life are the Diablo and the Murcielago, not the uh, not the Mira and the Countach. So looking at it from an outsider standpoint, it's just not that great compared to the rest. Next, however, is going to be the Lamborghini Gallardo or Gallardo, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put it in C tier again. Gallardo, oh boy. This is like the Huracan of the 2000s. You know how like the Murcielago was their supercar and then the Eurica or the Murcielago was their supercar and then the Gallardo was like their entry level supercar. It's kind of the same with what's going on right now with the Aventador and the Huracan. Um, and in my opinion, the Huracan is just so much cooler than it, so much better than it. And you can buy, like I said, if you buy like a rebuilt title crashed Huracan, you could buy one for around the same price as you're buying a Gallardo. And in my opinion, the Huracan is so much better than the Gallardo. Uh, but the Gallardo is cool. It is one of the best ways to get into an exotic car if you are broke like us uh it is like i said if you buy one of these at auction and that has been in an accident you can buy one for of these for like 30k which is ridiculous but you obviously have to put a lot more money into it to get it fixed but still like that's that's crazy money for a lamborghini model that's actually still very fast it's not like a slow car people like to twin turbo these and when they do that it's awesome too these freaking twin turbo gallardos are sick nasty uh, i think these gallardos really shine in the modifying world i just want to put that out there i think if you modify these gallardos is when it really becomes they really become cool but stock i just don't think they're anything that great 
Lamborghini Mercy Alago is next, and I think this is easily an S tier car. I think this is the best Lamborghini ever made. This is obviously 100%, and I'm not ashamed to admit it, nostalgia. This is my poster car. You know, you guys that are a little bit older, the Mira and Countach were your guys's. Well, to me, the Mercy Alago was mine. This is a car that we all wanted growing up. I freaking love the Mercy Alagos. The gated manual in them is amazing. The looks on them are just absolutely perfect i love the bat wings in the back the mercy lago sv is even cooler um but to be honest with you i'd rather own just a base model mercy lago because i like it better without the wing um but yeah the mercy lago is super freaking cool stay tuned for friday because i'm making a video all about the mercy lago actually so if you want a, a, a deep dive on the mercy lago then uh, stay tuned for that but yeah the mercy lago absolutely wonderful car absolutely amazing car love it. it there's literally nothing i would change on the mercy lago i think it's perfect uh next is going to be the lamborghini centenario or centenario it is the only other car that you could argue is a hyper car by lamborghini uh i'm gonna put it in the b tier underneath the veneno i do like the veneno a little bit better than the centenario the centenario in my opinion was just like marketing gimmick car by lamborghini they just wanted people to talk about them again and so they made this car I just feel like it was a little bit lazy. I know it sounds stupid because it's a Centenario, it's a freaking hyper car, but it just it just seems like they were just like, oh, let's just make another car. Like, let's make one that they're gonna like and we'll put it on the Forza games and then people will wanna buy it. And that's what they did. And it just, I do love the car, don't get me wrong. Obviously it's one of the, if I could own a Centenario, I would not say no, but it's just, it's also stupid money. Uh, I, in my opinion, it doesn't look that great. It just looks kind of like an Aventador, uh, but in the future. If this became like their next, uh, you know, flagship supercar and they charged a lot less for it, then I would understand. But for what they're charging for these cars, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I'd rather much, much rather, much rather own like a Mercy Lago and a Yurikon for the prices you can buy a freaking Centenario for. So I do like the car. Obviously, it's a Lamborghini. How could you not like any Lamborghini, to be honest? But I just think compared to the rest of the Lamborghini fleet, it ain't the best. But ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of today's tier list. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing a video on Andrew Tate's cars and how much they're worth. It's going to be a new series that we're going to do called like Celebs Cars. And we're just going to go over different celebrities, YouTubers, whatever, that have a car collection. And I'm going to rank them, in my personal opinion, from the worst to best. And I'm going to give you guys the total estimated value of that person's collection. Uh, I think it should be a great series to start. I watch these videos a lot on YouTube, and I'm super excited to just, like start it myself. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start with Andrew Tate just because he's trending and he's popular. No, I do not like support Andrew Tate. Okay, so before you're like, this guy likes Andrew Tate's a big Andrew Tate fan. No, I'm not. Okay, I think that if you do support Andrew Tate, you need to do a little bit more research. That's all I'll say. You just need to do a little bit more research and get form your own opinions on things. Uh, but that's besides the point anyway. We'll get into that tomorrow. I don't know why I'm talking about that right now. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Das Vidanya. Have a nice night.